So we have here another Smith chart problem, and essentially it gives us a load of 100 plus J150 ohms is connected to a 75 ohm lossless line, and it asks to find a whole bunch of parameters based on um, these conditions of the actual line. So the way we usually start these problems, uh, the first step is to usually is to uh, determine what the normalized impedance of the actual load is going to be. So we find that ZL bar is simply going to be ZL divided by Z0. Now ZL we find is 100 plus J150. We're going to divide this by 75. This is 1.33 plus J2. So now we go over to our uh, Smith chart and we're going to plot this point. So the J2 circle is actually this thing here. So we can highlight that just so we know where that is on that side. And along the real axis we are actually on 1.33. So 1.33 is actually going to be just about here, we'll say, is where that intersection is going to be. So this point here, we're going to assume is our load. Now the thing is, I mean, the, the, the marker I'm using, I guess, is a little thick. Yours may be a little thinner. At the end of the day, all that matters is we can mark our point here. And of course, we will label this point ZL bar. So that's usually the first step. Now the second step is usually we have we want to connect this line so that if we need to, along the bottom of the actual Smith chart, we can actually determine uh, what the value of the reflection coefficient is going to be. So if I measure this line and I compare it to the scale I have at the bottom here, I should be able to find my reflection coefficient as well as my SWR. Now, we also want to always draw, uh, draw this S circle. And so I've gone ahead and drawn it beforehand just to uh, save us some time here. So essentially this is a circle with radius of this uh, purple uh, trace that we have here. So uh, what you'll find is that this radius, which is your purple trace, is actually going to be um, your SWR uh, when you measure it along your SWR scale. And at the same time, it will be your, um, it'll be your reflection coefficient when measured along the reflection coefficient line. So I think that looks about good enough. Um, again, I mean, the values that I've, I've calculated are done off uh, on a piece of paper. So my Smith chart on paper is, of course, the perfect circle. Here, the, the circle is simply drawn for the purpose of demonstration. So we have ZL uh, we start with. So part A, we want to find gamma. So gamma, uh, that is both magnitude of gamma as well as the angle for gamma. So the magnitude of gamma is just going to be the length of this line. So if you were to actually take a ruler and were to measure this line, um, and then you were to actually superimpose that along the scale at the bottom that measures reflection coefficient, you will find that uh, magnitude of gamma is actually equal to about 0.65. Uh, again, you might get 0 0.66, you might get 0 0.7, you might get 0 0.6. That's all fine. There's no real issue uh, with the actual, you know, nitty-gritty little numbers like that. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to extend this line a bit past that so we can actually see what the angle is. If you see the angle there, it's about 40 degrees. So we're going to call that theta, uh, well, let's write it in here first. So this angle here is actually going to be theta gamma. And we're going to come over here and we're going to write that theta gamma is going to be 40 degrees. And therefore, gamma is going to be 0 0.65 angle 40 degrees. Simple enough. Now, what about S? So S is, uh, as you know, is this, is this radius uh, of this circle. And in particular, it's where this radius of the circle or where this S circle, this light blue circle, intersects with this uh, real axis. Now, you can't really see it that clearly. Even if I do zoom in, it's a little uh, it's a little unclear, but it looks like it's going through about 0 0.475 or so. So I'll call that 0 0.4, or sorry, not 0 0.4, 4.75. So we'll call that S equals 4.75 or so. Again, yours will be a lot clearer than, than, than the one I have. So um, 
you, you might be able to see 0 0.48, you might be able to see 0 0.485. I mean, anywhere number, any, any number around 0. Point, or sorry, 4.8. I keep saying 0. Any number around 4.8 should be fine. Anywhere between 4.7 and I'd say 4.9 ish should be uh, a close enough answer for uh, to be considered correct. Uh, now we want the load admittance YL. The load admittance YL is simply the point on this circle that is directly opposite from ZL. So how do we find this point? I'm just going to take this and I'm going to draw a point between the origin and my other uh, and the load point I've drawn there. And so if I find this point of intersection along this circle here, we'll call this YL normalized. And if I read that value off, um, well, on my actual Smith chart, the value I get for YL normalized is about 0 0.2, uh, let's call it 0 0.22, and I get minus J 0 0.35. Now, like I'm saying, on my Smith chart here, it might be a little unclear, uh, just because, uh, you know, the circle's not perfect and whatnot. But I guess what's more important here to realize is, uh, is to look at the procedure and the mechanics of how the Smith chart actually works. So that is YL normalized. Uh, we know Y0 is going to be 1 over Z0, so that's going to be 1 over 75. And then YL is going to be 1 over 75 times 0 0.22 minus J 0 0.35. And so this is actually 3.04. Um, sorry. Uh, this is actually going to be uh, it's a little less than three we'll call it it's about 2.93 uh, and so this one here is going to be j 4.67 and both of these values are in milli siemens um, and that is YL. Moving right along, part D asks for Z in at 0 0.4 lambda from the load. So our load is here at ZL. Okay. Uh, if our load is here, we need to go uh, away from the load, first of all, uh, by 0 0.4. Now, we know that a half revolution across this is actually going to be quarter lambda. So this distance here is going to be uh, lambda over 4. In other words, this thing is going to be 0 0.25 lambda. And so now I need to go another 0 0.15 lambda uh, in, in the same direction, of course. So this looks like it's about 0 0.05 uh, 0 0.055 is this point here. So if I go up to this horizontal, this here is another 0 0.055. And so now this is this total thing um, from my point ZL to this horizontal point will be 0 0.305. Uh, so this is 0 0.305. Now I need to go another 0 0.095. So if I go 0 0.09 and then I go another half, I should end up somewhere about here. So now this distance here is 0 0.095 lambda. And then so now if I come all the way here, I should have traveled 0 0.4 lambda. And so now the procedure is very simple. We take our line again, and we run it through the origin, and we run it through that point we just found. And now the intersection of this line on our S uh, circle, we can call Z in 0 0.4 lambda. And of course, this is normalized. So now what value is that if you read it off? Um, well, I mean, like I said, again, the numbers may vary slightly. On the Smith chart that I have here, it looks, 
it looks like it would be around 0 0.3 so I'm gonna call that 0 0.3 on the real and I'll call that about 0 0.63 on uh, the imaginary so part D Z in 0 0.4 lambda normalized is gonna be 0 0.3 plus J 0 0.63 and so Z in 0 0.4 lambda the actual value is just going to be 75 times 0 0.3 plus j 0 0.63. And so when we actually multiply that out, we'll find that this is 22.5 plus j 47.25 ohms. And so this is part D. We are now done. Um, moving on to part E. Part E asks for the locations of Vmax and Vmin with respect to the load if the line is 0 0.46 lambda, sorry, 0 0.46, 0 0.6 lambda long. So part E, Vmax and Vmin from load if line is 0 0.6 lambda. Okay, so how do we go about solving this? Well, we know we're going to have to start from our load. And we have to remember where we have Vmax and where we have Vmin. If you recall, Vmax points are here. And Vmin points always, always, always on the Smith chart occur here. So it's it's just a matter of counting how far we go from the load to get to Vmax and how far we go from the load to get to Vmin. Now we have to do this in terms of lambda, of course. And we want to keep in mind that la the line itself is 0 0.6 lambda. Um, so we will measure these distances, of course, in terms of lambda, and they will not be actual distances. So first, we can find this distance here, let's say. Um, this one here let's find so this will we'll call it d v max so it's the distance to v max and so if this point here let's say is 0 0.195 and i'm looking at the outer scale so this is 0 0.195 lambda and this one here we always know is 0 0.25 lambda then we can say that d v max is just going to be the difference between those two so that d v max is going to be 0 0.25 minus 0. I think it was 195. Yes, 195. 195 lambda. And so the distance to Vmax is going to be 0. 0.25 minus 0. 0.195. And so this is going to be 0. 0.055 lambda. Uh, for for general sake, let's call it one, uh, just for the sake of general keep it general and keep it um, because we might have more than one maximum is the point I'm trying to make because if you think about it if it's 0. 0.6 lambda long and we know one revolution is 0. 0.5 lambda then we might have a second one and we'll have to determine that later v min is just going to be 0. 0.25 plus this distance because if I go if I have gotten from the load to v max to get from v max to v min on this side all I really have to do is just add a quarter lambda. So in this case, what happens is, uh, let's call it d v min 1. This is going to be uh, d v max 1 plus 0 0.25 lambda. So this is going to actually be 0 0.305 lambda. Uh, well. 5, 5, but I mean, that's just really nitpicking, I guess, at that point. Okay, so now we've traveled uh, along the line. Of course, we want to find all the points along the line that are minimum or maximum. So we found first maximum, we found a first minimum. Now we come all the way back to ZL, and we've traveled 0 0.5 lambda at this point, because we've done one entire revolution. So now we have to actually go 0 0.6 lambda. So it turns out that this is actually going to be within the line again. So we have a second maximum. So where does the second maximum occur? The second maximum is going to occur uh, exactly half a la uh, wavelength uh, after this maximum. So if I take dv max 1 and I add 
lambda over 2 to that, I should have dv max 2 because we've only gone another revolution. So I go dv max 2 is going to be dv max 1 plus lambda over 2. And so this is going to be 0 0.5055 lambda. Sorry, 0 0.555 lambda, because it's 0 0.05, right? 55 five lambda. And so these are our maximums. Now, I could go further. But what I'll find is that there's no other maximum at that point. So if I went started at ZL and I went the entire way around, that's half lambda. Now I go another, uh, let's say, you know, 0 0.05 lambda here. And if I go another 0 0.05 lambda here, the line pretty much finishes somewhere down here. So I don't have another minimum is the thing we need to, uh, you know, pay attention to. Uh, so we found the locations of Vmax and Vmin with respect to the load. Uh, now we want to find Z in at the generator. So part F is Z in at generator. Now how do we do this part? Essentially it tells us this. It tells us that I have some generator here and I have some load here. And it tells me that this distance to here, from here to here is 0 0.6 lambda. So what do I do? I start at my load, I travel 0 0.6 lambda towards my generator, and I find the impedance there. So if I start at my load here, and I do one whole revolution, I have 0 0.5 lambda. Then we calculated that from ZL to this horizontal is 0 0.05. So now at this point, I've traveled half lambda plus 0 0.055 lambda. So I still need to travel another 0 0.045 lambda. So essentially, I want to come to this point again, and I want to travel 10 lambda down uh, from this point. And so, I mean, the simplest way to look at that is, where is this point? So this is approximately, I'd say, 0 0.195 is what I've read off there. So then 10 or 0 0.1 lambda is just going to be somewhere between 0 0.29 and 0 0.3. And so I'm going to take that midway point between there. And we are going to extend this line here. And now Z in at that point is just going to be this Z in there. And so now what value is that? If you actually look at the Smith chart, um, on this one it might be a little unclear, but the value that I actually have on my other, on the paper drawn, better drawn Smith chart, is that I have Z in normalized is 1.8 minus J 2.2, and so Z in is going to be Z naught, uh, well, we could just write that as 75, 75 times 1.8 minus J. 2.2 and so we end up with 135 minus j165 ohms and this is z in so that's your final answer so we've gone ahead and we've solved the entire question i hope you found this video useful if there are any questions please comment below if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next one